What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael and welcome to the highly addictive channel known as Fudge Muppet. Today I'm going to be taking you through seven naughty substances in Elder Scrolls and we all know what this means, fictional drugs. But if we put seven drugs in the title then the video would probably get flagged and we don't have time for that. There are many illegal, highly potent substances that people get their hands on in the Elder Scrolls universe, some of which can only be obtained in certain Oblivion realms. The final fact I tell you about with substance number seven is truly gross but in a fascinating way, so make sure you watch it till the end and without further ado, let's get into it. The first substance on our list is moon sugar. This crystal powder comes from elsewhere and in Skyrim you would have seen it being sold by the various Khajiit caravans that roam between cities. Moon sugar actually comes from refining cane grasses and when you consume it you fall into a state of euphoria. At least that's what happens to humans, after which they become very exhausted, often looking to regain that high. However, this potent narcotic has a very different effect on the Khajiit. In their homeland of elsewhere, moon sugar is actually used like a magical spice that's put on meals to make it more enjoyable. Khajiit have a massive sweet tooth. And this sugar keeps them happy as a result. As you'd expect, it does not affect them so drastically. They do not fall into that happy but stupid state which other races do unless they seriously overconsume it. Khajiit literally ingest the stuff every day and even use it to tame and train sench tigers. Many have also become very rich from selling this native food especially in many provinces where it is illegal. It's even used to make other illicit consumables such as skooma and the Balmora blue beverage which you steal in Skyrim for a Thieves Guild side quest. The second substance on the list is from the other beast race, the Argonians. It's called Daryl, and like most dangerous consumables, it's highly illegal. It literally translates to seeing everything in ecstasy, and as one could guess, this is basically what it does to the user. This Argonian drug is actually derived from a native black marsh snake called a moon adder and it actually can't be taken safely by non-Argonians. This isn't actually surprising considering that much of Black Marsh itself isn't even inhabitable to other races. Third on the list, we have a highly addictive narcotic known as Feldew. Many people who played the Shivering Isles DLC for Oblivion would remember this one. Its bright green is produced inside the bodies of a certain variety of weird mantis creatures known as Elytra, and just like the moon sugar, it will give you a big high and a huge low. It's very potent, boosting your intelligence, agility, and strength. This of course refers to in-game attributes, but it's easy to imagine how much this drug would enhance the user if you think outside of gameplay mechanics. After a few minutes, you get ridiculously severe withdrawal symptoms, and everything that was enhanced is now degraded heavily. You become weaker mentally and physically, and you will continue to feel this way unless you can get some more of the green stuff. Use it for too long, and you'll become extremely aggressive and even change your facial appearance for the worse. However, there's a special chalice known as the Chalice of Reversal, which resides in the Shivering Isles. This lets you indulge in Felju constantly, as using it inhibits withdrawal symptoms and cures addiction permanently. Next up, we've got drug number four, but this one is considered a legal drug in Skyrim. It's called Sleeping Tree Sap. It's known for making people feel much healthier for a while, and as a result, it's highly valued. It's not exactly the naughtiest substance to be on this list, but it does have side effects which can lead to blurry purple vision and temporary slowness. This can lead to it being abused for fun, although you'd be much better off selling this stuff to Khajiit trading caravans as they're known to pay a lot of coin for samples. Getting hold of this prize drug isn't really hard either if you know where to go. It's obtainable at the sleeping tree in the White Run Hold, and you can harvest the sap using a spigot that's installed on it. The fifth substance on our list is the Notorious Skooma. This is refined from moon sugar and the Dunma perfected the drug when they added in Nightshade. You can take it in liquid form or smoke it through a pipe by vaporizing the liquid instead. It's much more powerful than moon sugar as a result and definitely illegal. It's also highly addictive and as a result there's a very high demand for it. This has led to a lot of criminal activity across Tamriel and therefore huge conflicts between various organized crime groups and individuals. Skooma results in the user switching between states of ridiculously extraordinary euphoria and depressive lethargy. Also, continued use will turn your brain to mush, leaving you in a permanent state of mental degradation and confusion. One only has to meet the High Elf named Phalian in the Dark Brotherhood questline of Oblivion to see what overconsumption will do to you. Sadly, for most who fall prey to skooma addiction, it's thought to be impossible to cure. That said, curing skooma addiction has happened before through some serious mental conditioning and the use of smart alchemy. Like moon sugar, Khajiits have quite the resistance to skooma. However, due to their
their love for it, they often face problems with addiction too. It's a lot more potent than moon sugar. It's even used in their ceremonies though, but those are sternly controlled by the moon bishops. Next up, we arrive at number six, Hist Sap. As the name suggests, this is literally the sap which comes from the sentient histories of Black Marsh. This stuff isn't really common as you obviously need to get it from a Hist tree, and as seen in Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, it's some seriously dangerous stuff. When consumed by a non-Argonian, it causes them to have intense hallucinations while sending them into a crazed state of bloodlust. In Oblivion, you end up perceiving innocent people as deadly goblins, but it also affects you negatively even if you are an Argonian, this means that it would have been modified to have similar effects on all races, or Bethesda just forgot their own law. You decide. What's meant to happen with Argonians is that their Hissap increases their combat prowess, making it useful for Argonian warriors like those in the Blackwood Company. When licked, Hissap also allows Argonians to receive visions from the Hiss directly, allowing for a very unique kind of communication from this wacky substance. Finally, for substance number seven, we have Green Moat. This is another green drug you'll find in Sheogorath's Plane of Oblivion, the Shivering Isles. Now, with the other drugs mentioned, the negative consequences do suck, but boy, you do not want to overdose on this one. Too much Green Moat will actually cause your heart to explode, causing you to instantly die of blood loss. This narcotic is a light green powder, and the unrefined version of it comes from mushroom tree saplings found in Mania. Obviously, the citizens of Mania don't take this substance to to blow their hearts up, so they take it in much smaller quantities. This allows them to feel intense acceleration and delight. In game, it also gives the player night vision and increased speed, endurance, and personality. It does blur vision as well, though, and decreases your brain power and strength. Now, for the really disturbing but fascinating fact, as mentioned, there is a duke who rules Mania, which is the happier, brighter half of Shergorath's realm. Well, when there's a new duke who will be taking over, there's a certain tradition that takes place. The duke who is going to be leaving invites the new duke over to have a grand feast. However, even though the food would be delicious, the event ends very violently. The old duke will consume three whole portions of green moat, causing his heart to explode due to severe overdose. The successor will then pour the old duke's blood all over an altar where it is then consumed by flames. And with that dramatic exit, it's official, and there becomes a new duke of mania. Subscribe to Fudge Muppet for more Skyrim videos like this. We know you love them and we love to make them. Like it if you learned something new and share it with your friends who like to take trips in the land of the Elder Scrolls. My name is Michael and I look forward to nerding out with you again very soon.